My name is Anna Evenson. I'm a junior attending North Dakota State University majoring in psychology with minors in biological science and criminal justice. I had the privilege of conducting research this summer in an RU program at NDSU. The goal was to learn about student reasoning used to inform decisions on important socio-scientific issues such as the use of Chimera embryo technology, the use of CRISPR in gene modification, and the use of herbal remedy. In this episode, I will be talking about how I characterize student reasoning behind the decision to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Today, I am joined by recent NDSU graduate, Amanda Unger. Why don't you tell us a little about yourself and your research related to the COVID-19 vaccine? Hi everyone, I'm Amanda, and as Anna said, I recently graduated from NDSU with a bachelor's in sociology and political science. NDSU received funding from the North Dakota Department of Health to promote vaccine uptake on campus. I got the opportunity to work with Dr. Mary Larson from NDSU's Department of Public Health, who is the project's principal investigator. Our study is a rapid ethnography, which is a study of behavior in the context of the space in which it occurs. With this kind of study, you are immersive. Essentially, you are a member of whatever community you are studying, and you attempt to accurately derive meaning from social cues. Ethnography can be done in many ways, like data collection, interviews, and observation. With this, we then compile our ideas into key insights, which can be used for intervention. Right, so a lot of what I learned through my research in characterizing why students chose why or why not to get the vaccine was directly reflected in some of the key insights of your work. In my study, the sample consisted of two general education biology courses for non-biology majors. The students were polled on their current and or planned vaccination status and asked for their rationale behind their response. We then compiled these responses into common themes, such as getting the vaccine in order to protect themselves or to protect others. I understand that one of your main implications from your study was that many students felt forced to get the vaccine. Sure. So many interviewees use negative language towards the idea of being forced to vaccinate. They use forced and pushed as a way to describe others making them feel that they had no choice in the matter. They related this to their government, their peers, coaches, and others. We found this with high confidence. Another similar implication we found was about incentives. Several people did not trust that there wasn't some underlying reason why people would pay them or reward them to get vaccinated. So for example, in this situation, an implication for intervention would be that people encouraging or incentivizing vaccines should try to be clear about why they're incentivizing people to vaccinate, to keep people healthy, to return to normal, etc. This would address the group of people that are vaccine hesitant due to quote suspicious unquote nature of incentives. This was also a common theme in my research. A little over 6% of students from the spring 2022 class reported that they were influenced by others in their decision to get the COVID-19 vaccine. This influence included language such as being pushed or forced, and also the monetary and other incentives being offered. Additionally, exactly 10% of students who had gotten at least one dose of the vaccine listed that because they were influenced by others so heavily to get their current vaccination status, they decided not to take the next step in the vaccination process. For example, one student said, I only got it because my parents wanted me to. I will not be getting any further vaccines for it because I do not want to and I do not think it's necessary. However, the highest reasoning for why people did not choose to continue their vaccination process, whether that be to get the second dose or to get the booster, was because people were simply too busy. Did you see anything like this in your research? Yes, absolutely. In my research, I found with high confidence that accessibility matters. The ease of access to things such as immunization or flu shots has been an impact on the likelihood of students to get them. Students may lack time or knowledge on how to get access to services and may prefer the convenience of events that are efficient at providing answers to all their questions. So I guess the big takeaway here is that if companies or schools want to promote the COVID vaccine, they have to get information out about how and when to get the vaccine in order to be accessible and easy. And yet some people might take that as being influenced in a negative way. Do you think there is any way to combat this issue? Our implication for intervention for accessibility discussed events NDSU had hosted in the past. Events like the Sexpo and Sextival were successful in drawing large crowds of young people to get informed on STIs and tested on site. These events provide incentives not directly related to the health of the individual, but incentives to attend the event itself. Furthermore, several respondents noted the ease of the free and quick COVID vaccination shots in the union. One complication we discussed about this was that you may get some of the same populations attending these events, but that is a whole different conversation. 
Exactly. While well, NDSU promoted very accessible vaccines right on campus, students still reported that they were too busy. Additionally, the second highest reason our 2022 sample reported why they were not vaccinated is because they thought the vaccine was unnecessary. This goes back to what you said earlier about making it very clear to people why these vaccine promotions are happening. To educate students on the necessity and data on the effectiveness and side effects of the vaccine are two important takeaways from my research. These overlapping issues between sociological thinking and science-related decisions are ones that take a balancing act of communication and science, one that hopefully this podcast helped to tackle. I'd like to thank you, Amanda, for joining me today and everyone who spent the last five minutes with us.